Hi, this is Terry Couty. Welcome to Deep Sea Foundation channel, where we talk about all topics related to breast reconstruction. Please let us know in the comments uh, if you have any uh, questions or comments about today's video and subscribe and like our channel. I am very honored today to be joined by Dr. David Song, who is an internationally recognized plastic surgeon specializing in microsurgery, especially procedures that are related to breast reconstruction. He is also the executive director for the MedStar Health Plastic Reconstructive Surgery Department in Washington, DC. Dr. Song, welcome. Thank you for having me again, Terry. Yeah, so I feel so fortunate, Dr. Song. We have patients uh, that come to the foundation and ask questions. And this morning, we're going to talk about nerve pain. I'm going to read a comment uh, that a, question, uh, a, a patient actually sent to me, but we get this conversation a lot on the journey, too, on the Facebook page that you are a member of, which we're very appreciative of, by the way. Um, so what she says is nerve pain. I randomly get it, ways to make it feel better, and an explanation by a doctor, that would be you today, on what is exactly happening when we feel this. So maybe just a brief anatomical description first, and then I'll let you go into uh, answering her question. Great. So, you know, this is a question I get a lot, Terry, um, because it's so common. And I think that we have to start with anatomy first. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of nerves throughout the body. And think about nerves as electric cables. It's very similar in many ways. Um, so the main generator and the main uh, motor and the control headquarters is your brain. There's all kinds of wires throughout the body. There, and, and this is to be very simplistic, of course, but there's a motor nerve and a sensory nerve. Motor nerves send signals from your brain to your hand to move it. And if I touch something or there's pain, there's a sensation that comes back to my brain that says, ouch, that's pain, that's heat, or that's cold, or that's pain. So think about it as two different groups of nerves. Motor nerves, again, that send signals, and then sensory nerves that receive signals from the outside world to tell your brain that be careful that's hot or cold or pain's coming or so, or so forth. So when you do a mastectomy, think about the breast as a mound and the nipple at the top um, as sort of the, the, the top of that mound. And the breast tissue is within it and the outside of that is your skin. So there are nerves coming underneath and through the breast tissue to innervate that nipple. Mm -hmm. And that nipple, of course, needs to be innervated for several reasons, for function, for, uh, for protection, for, you know, for, uh, you know, for breastfeeding and for uh, sexual function. So there's a lot of reasons why that nerve goes to the nipple. And that during a mastectomy, the breast, even if the skin is spared and the nipple is spared, the breast is hollowed out. All the bad stuff is removed along, unfortunately, with some of the good stuff. And those are where nerves are going through. And it's a big sensory organ. So think about all that breast being removed and those nerves that are tiny, that are sometimes very, very microscopic, are just cut. So there's this big myth that reconstruction um, takes away the sensation. It's actually not the reconstruction at all. It's not the implant. It's not the deep flap. It's not the latissimus flap or the gap. It's actually the act of removing the breast, the mastectomy causes a numbness or a loss of sensation. Mm -hmm. Occasionally when you cut a nerve, the nerve balls up because sensory nerves need to do something and go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Think about that. It's a constant live wire that needs to go and do something and go somewhere and receive sensation and uh, signals. If you cut it or you burn it or you remove it, it balls up and the, the nerve fibers create this scar, which is called a neuroma. And that neuroma sits right on the chest wall. With or without a reconstruction, when you stimulate it, it can cause tremendous pain, itching. A lot of people cause, talk about itching inside that they can't scratch. Um, other weird sensations like phantom pain. This is why when someone gets their leg removed or their foot removed, they have phantom pain. It's that nerve that needs to go somewhere and do something. 
no longer is going anywhere and doing anything. So if you think about that. That circuitry path has been broken. Been, been broken, yet the brain is still asking, hey, where is that sensation? So those little nerve endings, because the breast is removed and you re either replace it with an implant a, above or under the muscle or a deep flap, it can go haywire. And so upwards of 20% of patients have what's called post-mastectomy pain syndrome. Mm -hmm. Those little nerve endings are just sitting there. So again, with or without reconstruction, you can put your bra on, you can move a funny way, you can breathe and you can get these zingers. That's what is going on. And occasionally in that subset of 20% of patients, uh, you can have tremendous pain, like debilitating pain. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, whether you remove the implant, replace the implant, put it deep flat, it still doesn't you know, go away. So that's a subset of patients. So now that people hopefully can understand where that pain is coming from, there are certain strategies we can do to mitigate the pain and in great situations, restore sensation. So think about what we're doing at Georgetown is after the removal of the breast, we actually find the nerve routinely. It's really the fourth intercostal nerve. Intercostal means in between your, your rib spaces. The fourth rib space right here is where the nerve sprouts out and goes through the substance of the breast into the nipple. Mm -hmm. That nerve that we find routinely can be paired and connected to a sensory nerve of your tummy where you can actually find that nerve. It's not anatomically correct, but again, it's just a wire going to a wire. Mm -hmm. We can connect those nerves under a microscope and restore sensation. So I have had patients that get full sensation back, almost hyper sensation back. Unfortunately, I have patients that get no sensation back. Most patients are somewhere in between. And there are some groups out in Southern California or Northern California, they're doing nerve grafts to lay new cable to then re-innervate the nerve. And we're toying with that concept as well. But it all starts with laying cable, thinking about this as just electricity and electrical circuits. I know it's very simplistic, there's so many different things, but that's why medicines like gabapentin, which, is, which help to decrease the signaling pathway of the nerves, help these type of pain syndromes. So that in essence is what these patients are feeling. And so um, if you think about how to treat that, diagnostically you can actually inject Novocaine into the area Typically, a lot of patients will say it's right here and you touch it and you get a zinger. Um, and if that's the case, we'll actually go in and explore that to try to find the nerve to then either bury it into a little piece of muscle or try to find a motor nerve that you can connect it to that doesn't require any function. And that gives the nerves somewhere to go and something to do. And the firing of pain stops. And so that's sort of the neat things that we're working on. That's called targeted muscle re -innervation. And a lot of that's been um, pioneered by, by my group at Georgetown that work on limbs after amputation. So we're using the same concept for the breast. Because again, whether it's the leg or the foot or the breast, the sensory nerves, it all goes to the same place. And it perceives pain uh, for protection and it perceives pain you know, for pleasure, for function and so forth. So, that's in essence, in a nutshell, what those nerves are and why so many people feel that. I'll say one more thing with that is, even if you don't get post-mastectomy pain syndrome, what happens is that many people, most people after a reconstruction, whether it's an implant-based reconstruction or autologous tissue-based reconstruction, during the recovery period, anywhere between a few weeks and upwards of nine months, they get electric shocks. Mm -hmm. That is very common. And that's actually your cut nerve endings trying to go somewhere and do something. And so if you have that pain, what you can do, it's like biofeedback. You can elicit that pain. It's kind of like when your foot falls asleep or your hand falls asleep, you kind of rub it. And that's to stimulate that nerve and help to deaden the nerve ending. So that's one of the things that I tell my patients, if you have pain after surgery, actually spend some time eliciting that pain, finding that pain and you know, it hurts, but rubbing it to help desensitize that nerve. And so that often helps. And then once you're about 13 to 14 months from surgery, those little zingers go away by and large, unless you're in that subgroup with post-pastectomy pain syndrome. You know, I have to tell you real briefly, you were talking about the itching. That, that still happens to me, but I have to yeah. tell you, 
maybe you can address this and it would be, you know, cross reference for other patients. I get it very seldom. And do you know, it's mostly on my side that was radiated. Yes. So I, you, you bring up a really good point. So radiation, we still don't know what the, it, the ramifications of radiation. We all obviously know that radiation you know, helps to save life, do, does local control, but it, it's, um, it's a non-discriminate killer, really. So it's kind of like, you know, um, uh, a bad way of killing weeds across the entire front lawn, right? It's a killer. It'll kill your grass. It'll kill the weeds, but it'll kill everything in its pathway. It's like napalm. Um, and it, your skin and your body doesn't fully recover. It mm -hmm. kills the enemy, but it doesn't fully recover. And so what that does, it kills all the cells, since, including nerve cells. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we hear this a lot in patients that have had radiation. Let's say they've had both sides removed and a deep flap done on both sides. The side that's been radiated has a higher frequency of pain, itching, and weird sensations of cold when it's hot, hot when it's cold, and anywhere in between. And so even in those situations, instead of scratching, you can actually try to find that nerve and release it. And sometimes, you know, that kind of massage therapy helps to, to fire enough signals back to your brain to say, hey, this is, this is not, you know, a real itch. And that's the other thing. It's sort of this biofeedback loop. So when we have patients with amputations and they have phantom pain, then we actually have them rub and look and say, okay, your foot's no longer there. And similarly, you can sit in the mirror and rub and say, this is not a real itch. This is because of a cut nerve ending. If you do that repeatedly, what happens is what's called a cortical reorientation. So your brain starts to reassess and understand that the signal is real, but it's not tied to itching. And it's not tied to pain. So this whole biofeedback, so your, your brain is basically learning that that nerve going to the fourth intercostal space that innervated your nipple is no longer there. And you're telling it and reminding it, hey, that's no longer there. And it's that fourth nerve. And here I'm eliciting it. It's pain or it's itching. And hey, that's not real pain to the nipple. It's not real itching to the skin. It's a real sensation, but it helps the, the brain uh, relearn that it's no longer dealing with that type of true itching or pain. And so it's not foolproof, but it, it, it really is this whole concept of biofeedback really helps patients. I have to tell you, this entire analogy of the circuitry was so helpful um, as a patient, as a patient advocate. Thank you for this explanation. I'm going to try some of that self-massage next time I get what I call it my internal itching that you can do nothing about. I'm going to give it a try this time. Thank yeah. you for that great. Yeah, yes. Um, thank you so much for that great explanation. We always enjoy having you. We will have all of your information um, where to find Dr. Song at the end of the video. Please uh, let us know if there are any other topics we can cover. Dr. Song is always readily available uh, when his time allows and he's not in surgery. So we appreciate having you today. Thank you. Thank you again, Terry. All right.